Block, thank you for asking. I have so many tips because I am a professional dealer with writer's block. If it's an, about an assignment, and I'll be honest with you, I don't care about your math grade. You can, you can do your math homework in the cafeteria as long as you want. But if you have a writing assignment uh, and you care about the quality of your work and your integrity, you have to start writing assignments the night you get them. Because you have to give yourself time to have some drafts, right? Or else it's going to stink. There's just no way around that. Um, and the, one of the reasons you get writer's block is that you've left it to the last minute. And so all your anxiety, you're exhausted, and your anxiety, and all the noises in your house is like in your head, and you can't think of any ideas. So the first thing against writer's block is to start it on time. If it's not an assignment, um, be regular. Do your writing kind of, on a try to do it on a daily basis. Even five minutes a day makes it easier when the next time you dive back into it. Another reason that you get writer's block is that we're sitting on our butts too much in America, right? That's why we have big butts. I like big butts. <laughs> right? It was the theme of my daughter's. My daughter's basketball team used to play that um, at the beginning of every game. And there was a group of moms, you know, we're like old, right? We're all sitting up there doing this, and the girls were just horrified. <laughs> Worst basketball year they ever had. We were responsible. Um, but movement. Um, your brain is not going to work properly unless your body is moving. And in, in school all day, you're sitting, sitting, sitting. So if, if you get home and, oh, I'm going to be a writer, and you're just like, Right? Try to skateboard, go swim, go to just move your body and you'll be surprised. Bring a notebook with you or a phone that you can speak into and record. Because you'd be surprised at how often when you're walking, your ideas will come to you. Um, Charles Dickens, who wrote books that you might read, probably not in high school, but maybe in college, pretty good, some of them, um, used to walk up to 20 miles a night. Why? He had like eight kids <laughs> in his house. So it's noisy, and so he would go out and go walking, and then he would get these incredible ideas. Um, the third and probably most significant contributor to writer's block is that you need to be nicer to yourself. Because nobody writes a, a story or anything perfectly the first time. When you guys see the finished product, there's years of work into this, and drafts, and you didn't, if you saw the first, one of these days I'm gonna get brave enough to put some first draft pages on the internet. And then everyone will go, oh my goodness. Um, this is not how it came out at first. And I think that when you've read enough that you know what good writing looks like, and then you try to go and write, and it doesn't look like that at all, you're like, wow, I must be the biggest idiot in the world. No, you're a writer. Nobody does it perfectly the first time. It comes out in fits and starts. Stephen King has a really good book about writing. Um, that you should read. It's called, it's a boring title, it's the only boring title, On Writing. Um, and it, right, I, I expect more from Stephen King. Um, but it's quite a good book. There's also another book I'm sure you have in the library called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And she really talks a lot about kind of the emotional stuff that what it feels like to have writer's block, what it feels like when your friend's writing is more successful than yours, what it feels like when you don't have ideas. Um, I think you would enjoy that book a lot. I do. I read it every year. Mm -hmm.